Rob Dyrdek is the only skater that when you search his name on Google, it says that he's an entrepreneur and not a skater, unlike what you see with other successful skateboarders such as Tony Hawk. But there is an incredibly good reason for this, as you will find out in this video, and I will show you how Rob Dyrdek turned his life around from a high school dropout to a multi-millionaire skateboarding entrepreneur, in today's episode of Skate Stories. Rob Dyrdek was born on June 28, 1974, in Kettering, Ohio. Dyrdek was involved in sports as a child and began skateboarding at the age of 11 when he received his first skateboard from a professional skater, Neil Blender. Dyrdek was instantly hooked on the skateboarding. He said that I was so focused on becoming a pro skater, I would sit in school and think about all the tricks I was going to do. And then I'd get out of school and skate until they made me come back inside. At the age of 12, Dyrdek acquired a sponsorship from the same company that Neil Blender was a team member of and began a skateboarding career. A few years later, Deerdeck and Blender would quit their board sponsor and create Alien Workshop. At the age of 16, Deerdeck decided to drop out of high school and instead move to Southern California to continue his professional skate career. He would later acquire the company himself during his post-riding career as an entrepreneur. Rob was never an exceptionally good skateboarder though. Don't get me wrong, of course he was pretty good, but he was never quite good enough to keep up with the pros and placed fourth in his first professional contest after laying an ollie impossible lip slide at the end of a run which he probably should have gotten a higher score for and placed a bit higher because this was 1990 and street skating was very young and a trick like that today is impressive but back then was absolutely insane. But in his words, that was the best he'd ever done at a contest and also the best place he'd ever gotten to. I hit the ground and I had rolled away like that place like ah, like erupted and I was like ah. <laughs> you know. Uh, magical, a magical experience. Got fourth place. It was the best I ever did in a professional skateboarding contest for the rest of my 20 year career. Really? Yeah, so never never got higher than fourth, and that was it. But even at the young age of 16, Rob was seeing his ambitions higher than just skateboarding. I, I think even when I was very first became a professional skateboarder, I used to always say, I gotta treat it like a business, you know, it's my career, and this is way before even the idea of understanding that you can be a personal brand. And I just think that sort of spirit, I was what I like to call raised by entrepreneur wolves, right? Where my influences at an early age were all of the closest people around me started companies. So in some of them, I, I use as examples of not what, what not to be, right? So, but it was from starting skateboard companies to clothing companies to, to retail stores to restaurants to clubs. Like this inner circle I had was very entrepreneurial. So. It, it instilled in me in a very young age that that's just what I was meant to do. Soon after moving in California, Dyrdek started his first company, Oron Trucks, and began a ride for Drawers Clothing, a company that later transformed into DC Shoes, which sponsored Dyrdek. He began his exploration of entrepreneurship through shoe design, and this led him to launch various short-lived companies, including a hip-hop record label and a skate shop. For everyone that has been keeping up in this series and learning about the history of skateboarding, this was all happening in the early to mid-90s, and Rob was a part of the first big wave of street skaters. In 1994, Dyrdek got into filming and began to film prominent skateboarding parts in 411 Video Magazine and for his own company, Alien Workshop. Although to most people, this may seem like a dream life as a sponsored skater, especially at a time when making a living off skateboarding was something that very few skaters could actually achieve. Behind the curtains, Rob was facing his own challenges. When you're in your early 20s and you're making you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, you're traveling the world uh, you know, as a professional skateboarder, what's life like? Man, I, it was bizarre, man. I, I really was lazy, you know? Smoked a lot of weed in, the, in that era. Wasn't committed to the craft, right? I, I think in that 21 to, to, to 24 era, I was very lost, right? I, I didn't, skateboarding wasn't giving me the fulfillment that I, I needed, right? It was during this time that the biggest fear of any sponsored skater happened to Rob, and DC informed him that he would only have two more years of working with them. But Rob Dyrdek refused to be defeated by this. In DC, I was 24 years old, and they were basically like, you know, uh, your best years are behind you. So we're gonna give you one more shoe and and give you a two-year contract to basically say thank you and, and we think you're done. I just, I remember sitting in there and looking at him and being like, man, I know it's not lip service, I'm not saying to say it, but in, in two years I'm gonna be a completely different person and, and there's no way that, that this is the end and I'm not even gonna say it, I'm just gonna prove it. And I literally like left that place uh, started searching for hypnotists, right? And found the hypnotist, the great Dr. George Pratt, 
who wrote a book called Hyper Success, right? Unleashing like your true inner belief that you believe you are meant to be successful. And I got hypnotized for success. And then literally in that two year span, became the best skateboarder of my entire career, but also to the very top of the industry. And then from that point on, only signed two year deals with DC for the next 10 years because I was like, no, two years from now, you're gonna pay me even more. Be it because he was hypnotized or not, Rob's career came out of stagnation leading up to one of the most important years he had yet in 2003. To start off, Rob founded RDF, Rob Deerdeck Foundation, with the goal of building legal skate parks for communities. Keep in mind, this was the early 2000s and there were only a couple dozen skate parks in all of America. So this was pretty big at the time. Then he was featured in DC's most famous commercial, the Rob Deerdeck Chase commercial. And most importantly to the culture of skateboarding, he had a skateboarding part in the DC video released in 2003. This was also the first time you saw Big Black as Rob's security. Take a cop and take a security guard. You want it? From, okay, from here on out, I'm gonna hire. I'm bringing a security guard to deal with security guards, cops, and over it. I have many, many different things I do as far as deer deck security. Um, make sure Rob skates. My job is to do the dirty work. Sometimes I might have to throw him over a fence. If he has any problems with anyone while he's skating, I handle that problem. He continues to skate. Cap, okay, is it cool they get one more spot, one more in before we leave? Man, you know, one more, one more. Hit up, Rob! You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We'll be in front of your stuff. Won't be no problems. You know, you ain't got to keep coming out here. Anybody that's going to disturb Rob's performance on the skateboard, my job is to take care of that. This is private property. You can't skate here. Get out of here now. Oh. I'm also first aid qualified, so if he gets hurt or boo-boo or anything like that, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's, that's my field, too. This led to the creation of Robin Big, which is the best friend reality TV show and was what really made Deerdeck known in the mainstream outside of skateboarding. Robin Big lasted three seasons until abruptly ending because of contradictory to what everyone thought, Robin and Big were not exactly the best of friends and would end up getting in a lot of verbal fights off camera. Although Robin and Big was over, Deerdeck's career with MTV was not because of how Rob proved himself as a reality TV show host and a creative director. Roughly a year after the end of Robin and Big, MTV aired the first episode of Rob Deerdeck's Fantasy Factory, which was a reality show featuring Rob Deerdeck and his friends, including Big Black actually, living in the Fantasy Factory, which was his office, personal skate park, and pretty much a creative space for anything he wanted. While I could cover everything that went down in the Fantasy Factory for literally hours, the most notable are the world records they set including riding the largest skateboard, the longest 50-50 rail grind, which is about 100 feet, the longest board slide, which is also 100 feet, the highest skateboard ramp jump into water, which is 10 feet 8 inches, and the furthest reverse ramp jump by car, which was 90 feet. Of course, some of these records have been broken today, but this puts in perspective what the show was like. The reverse car jump was one of Rob's last stunts for Fantasy Factory before it stopped airing, after a very successful run. And although Rob wanted to let go of MTV and wanted to move on to bigger and greater things, MTV just could not let go of him and offered him a pretty nice check to have him host Ridiculousness. And then they're like, hey, like, will you do it again? Will you do one more? And I'm like, you know, no, it wasn't on purpose, but I was kind of threatening them, not threatening, but basically saying like, I don't want to be on MTV when I'm, when I'm 40, I don't want to be Kurt Loader. As we were talking, right, when they wanted me to do it, they are like, uh, you know, do Fantasy Factory again. I said, man, like honestly, it's gonna have to be so much money that I'd be stupid not to do it. And then a couple weeks later, they're like, how about this? I'm like, okay, when do we start? <laughs> and... So in 2011, Rob signed a deal with MTV for an unknown amount, probably a lot, to host a show that he's most known from today, Ridiculousness. In this show, he reacts to and shows viral videos from the internet, usually involving failed do-it-yourself attempts at stunts. But going back to 2010, Rob will do something that would undoubtedly change skateboarding forever by forming SLS, also known as Street League Skateboarding. Not only would it have the largest monetary prize with $200,000 going to first place, which was won by... 
Well, if you watched the second episode of Skate Stories, you'd know who that was. But for those who haven't, I'll leave a playlist at the end of the video for you to catch up. But anyway, Street League was the first official professional league for skateboarding, similar to the NBA or the NFL. It is because of this that skateboarding today is taken seriously as a sport, and it now provides an outlet for young skaters to look up to. Rob also has plans for creating little leagues and minor leagues and providing a path for young skaters to follow. This could mean that in the future, instead of having an option of choosing to play football or baseball or whatever other sport kids at school can choose, kids will have the option to choose skateboarding and be taught how to skate by coaches. In the long run, this means there will be more skate parks everywhere you look and also provide a brighter future for skateboarding. A year earlier, before Street League, Rob would produce and star in his own movie, Street Dreams, which he spent $2 million of his own money on, and absolutely flopped at the box office. Later in 2012, he would also create Wild Grinders, a cartoon show that Rob was the main character in. It only had two seasons, and the IMBD score is 2 out of 10s, so I'm assuming it didn't do too hot either. Three years after founding SLS, Rob would revolutionize the way that future Street Leagues and other competitions would be scored with ISX, also known as the Instant Scoring Experience. It works by having each judge have a handheld dial, allowing for instant intuitive scoring and data input. So what does this mean? Well, before ISX, skateboarders would have to wait to see a score and find out who won. But now the score of each trick can be scored instantly, and it removes the wait for the contestants and the audience. Today, Rob Dyrdek is still hosting Ridiculousness, and is officially retired from skateboarding. I can understand why people hate on him sometimes, from people saying that he's a sellout to MTV, to people hating on him for even creating Street League, because of their skateboarding isn't a sport mindset. And I get it, for some people, skateboarding is a form of expression, but can also be a sport for others. And thanks to Rob and many other skaters that revolutionized skateboarding, the idea of becoming a pro skater is closer to reality than it ever used to be. As for selling out, sure you could say that Rob sold out to MTV, but in reality, who wouldn't host their own show for millions of dollars in return? You have to be stupid not to. At the end of the day, people fail to realize that Rob Dyrdek is an entrepreneur first and a skateboarder second. He may have started off skating, but he has also given back to the community so much that to call him a sellout just doesn't make sense. He is without a doubt one of the few people that have paved the way for skateboarding into the future and he will be remembered probably for as long as skateboarding is around for. And that is the story of Rob Dyrdek. Thank you everybody that made it to the end of the video, and if you made it this far, you probably enjoyed it. So it would really help out the unforgiving YouTube algorithm if you left this video a like. And if you're new, make sure to subscribe because I'll be uploading more videos like this one in the future. And if you want to check out the Skate Stories playlist, it should be on the screen right now. That's all for today, and I'll see you soon.